Welcome, um, and thank you all for joining. Um, yeah, let's talk uh, and let's get to through this. The quest to round caps. Um, this is very dear to my heart, and I'm also, let me check, just like, yeah, I think some faces are working also on this. Really good. So, first, let's say hello. I'm Alexander Mitzkus. Some people might know me as a Zuga Master in the Blender community. And I'm a, a lead free artist at Denkwerk, where I um, yeah, usually do 3D stuff, but also sometimes um, I'm more of a general tinkerer and um, helping them do stuff. I've been at the Blender conference before. I've had a talk on uh, Metaballs, and it was uh, really well received. Um, I said meet a ball instead of Metaball for a long time, which is all right. Uh, afterwards, I tried to bring a bit more of animation to the illustrator's mind which was uh, really fun to do. Then I went back to Metaboards because there's a lot of stuff to talk about and also hard surface modeling with Metaboards, which was really well received. Like, um, <laughs> this person was not really happy <laughs> that I talked about hard surface modeling um, in Blender with Metaboards. And this next talk will be uh, in line with all of this because it has the tag story time and community on it. So you're not going to learn anything exceptionally new here. Um, but I want to guide you through this little experience of mine for the last two years um, and also maybe explain how to interact with developers, how to not interact with developers, and just how, how things work from an outside and inside perspective. Uh, let's start with the case study so you know what I'm talking about and what is this round cap curve thing if you haven't followed the last two years of my uh, journey. So. Imagine you have a, a really great colleague and designer in your company, and he sends you this thing. And he's um, also intrigued to do this in Blender, right? So he has like this sketch, and he imagines, yeah, this, this lines can be tubes, and then there's like a more 3D look. And he's really great at lighting, uh, lighting everything and setting uh, the thing up so that it looks good, but he's not a geometry nodes professional. He is not a modeler. He's not like into procedure generation. He just wants to export his fantastic outlines um, to Blender. So this is my case study, and let's just go through this real quick so you notice uh, what will happen and what will not. So first thing is, if your design software can export SVGs, you're good. Like, SVGs are weird. You can put, I think, executable stuff inside there. You can write them by hand. You can export them out of professional software or Blender itself. But first, export them. Next step is you import your uh, SVG file into Blender, and that's Really easy, the import comes pre-installed with Blender. It doesn't even says no properties, so you send it in there. And now, <laughs> I did this for this presentation. I import my file. Fantastic, nothing happens. <laughs> this is my imported design. So it turns out I need to scale this up. Um, I've been using Blender for 10 years now, so or even longer. So I figured out like scaling is a good idea if I don't see anything. but a beginner might not. Next thing is, perfect, my file is there. Just now I need my outlines back and extrude everything. So that happened. <laughs> and it even happens even worse. You sometimes get like this flicker. There's like um, rounding precision errors. Not really fun. So your next step is research. Um, how to get things right. You maybe put in like in your favorite search engine. Blender, curve size too big, flicker, help. Next thing you know, you can even scale things in edit mode. So we do just that and get our curves back. Wonderful. Can even go back now and make them thick. Darn it. That's not what somebody expects if you want to get his curve extruded. So <laughs> let's do this again. Research, Blender, curve, extrude all curves. Get more information. We can hold down the Alt button and scale everything up. Fantastic. And now the first people will notice that this does not have what I expect. It does not have the round caps. We can look inside this tube, um, and we did not import the design as it was intended. But what we can do is we can now go in and clean up this file and just make sure that it looks perfect. So again, research. <laughs> That's now the, the next time we went into a favorite search engine. Put in Blender 3.1, bevel, multiple curves, selection, sphere caps, round, help. <laughs> like now we're getting anxious because we're trying to do this basic task, but we're still not done. Good thing there's nice people on the internet. 
there is on Gumroad um, an add-on spherical caps for Blender curves by Luke. And um, it's really nice. You can get it for free. You can pay uh, the person uh, some money. Problem is, if you get it for free once, you cannot pay afterwards. I figured out. And I'm sorry, I need to still pay you money because it's really awesome. But I need to do a new account for this. And so two minutes later, this is not a one-click solution. I need to go to a website, find this person, get an account on the website to download this. Stuff happens in between. But after we did this, everything works as intended. We can append the geometry nodes tree and have uh, all my curves selected here. Can paste it. I can even copy the uh, geometry nodes to all the other outlines. And it basically, oh, that stopped too early. And it works as intended. So we got there in the end, but this is not really an experience that uh, any of us want to go through. Like, this is, even if I did this now once, the second time I will have some of the problems again. Even if I have everything set up, I still need to re-import this setup. So success. <laughs> we, we have done our job. But I talked to an industry professional, uh, Julian Glander, an illustrator. And we were, came to the point like I could make his, or you all, could make his life 2% easier um, if this were not a solution that needs like multiple steps. And just to be really quick, because for what do we need these uh, round caps on our curves? example, it's really easy for beginners to model basic shapes um, that look a bit more friendly, are a bit more um, round. Uh, it's really easy to get your own neon signs and typogra typographic experiments. Um, it's highly used in things like uh, motion graphics, where you have animated strokes. Um, and I put this also here from the side. And it's really important for uh, all the solutions that we create that we can th do things like that, that we can build up the curve around our um, spline that we set up, and also to make sure uh, that, that things don't flicker, that we don't have step interpolation. Because if we have, again, steps or interpolation errors, we can do things by models. But we want to uh, have the splines and like the parametric um, information. And then again, also just a quick test. It's really great for small characters and for uh, even articulated characters. So because I don't want to show you only the big issues, I also want to show you some solutions. There's add-ons, there's geometry nodes now, and there's workarounds. So animation nodes is an add-on that's really dear to my heart. It opened uh, the world of procedural animation and procedural generation to me. And I even made a video on that um, in the past and uh, shared a setup that does exactly the job. So um, you can have multiple splines inside of one curve object. It will copy over the round caps to the system. Uh, Manu Yavinen, you may know him uh, from uh, old Blender uh, projects, um, was so nice and um, took my file and made it publicly available on his website as CC0. And I was really happy that somebody was archiving this experiment uh, for others to use. So in preparation of this talk, I downloaded this exact same file. And I did not have animation nodes installed. So no, no problem. I'm just going to go back and install animation nodes. But somehow, I was not able to install animation nodes in the most recent version, which is an error on my side. <laughs> this is not that the animation nodes um, add-on is not really well um, uh, done. but. I had to install the add-on. I had to install the right version. It might break between Blender versions. And it's also, as all um, add-ons, really good for highly specific tasks. And it's also good for heavy lifting. So if you have something that really needs to happen outside of Blender or is a really specific job that just only one person or like one group of people needs to do, then an add-on is a really valid option. But there's a little helper now in Blender. And it's called Geometry Nodes. Geometry nodes um, make procedural generation of geometry and also, again, animation with a few tricks possible. It comes built in with the Blender versions, and it's really nice. But then again, it also broke in between. So geometry nodes, as you might notice or even know, uh, did like a few versions. So there was uh, backwards compati compatibility issues which is OK if you know about it. But um, a colleague of mine got an old file from me and wanted to re-render it and just got stuck with this screen, uh, which is OK because, again, you just need to re-import a valid node tree, and everything will like line up again automatically. But <laughs> Geometry Nodes is 
close to be perfect. It's high stability, really good performance. Uh, it's like the most valid option. You can uh, exchange files, you can link files. But it has been overhauled a few times in the past, so it's still breaking in a few spots. And like your setups need to be uh, imported from outside. Like they do not come shipped with Blender, which is okay because that's how Blender works. But it's no one-click workflow. Like there's no like do this now. So next up, there's more workarounds. So this one is like. I really don't like what I'm going to show you. There's some few tricks, and I will not show you which tricks exactly, but you can make something like this out of a regular curve without an add-on, without animation nodes, without geometry nodes, but it's also not really perfect. So one of the tricks is to have the um, bevel resolution to zero, so it's just a triangle. Then you can extrude it and have the uh, ends welded together with the caps. and. It's round, but that's not what I wanted. So there's intention and precision in, in this thing. There's a lot of ways to get rounded or smooth end caps. So by just shading things smooth, then it may look round, but it's like the geometry is not round. They're often tied to a specific level of subdivisions or meshing. So this um, example I showed you before works really well in like some cases, but these cases are so small and you need to be so precise to get them. It's maybe not for everyone. And also, I should have always asked for spherical caps instead. So it's actually the quest to spherical caps, because just round caps is not really enough. I was expecting, and also the designers uh, I showed you before, to have an actual sphere uh, showing up on their curve end. So <laughs> then that happened. <laughs> During my presentation preparation, Dalai Felinto just wrote me a small WhatsApp message. It's like, hey, Tsuga, <laughs> you're working on this round caps presentation, right? I'm not sure if you notice or know, but I'm using a geometry nodes round caps setup for the hair tools icons. It's like, oh, hair tools. Like, this is inside of Blender. There's somebody using a workaround to get this feature done. I was like, but this will be nothing, right? It's not mind changing or anything. I was like, OK, yeah, this is the icon. Just like, try it out. No problem. We are importing the uh, node tree again. I missed the click here. And then we are connecting it to the curve, and then some, something clicked. <laughs> because in the very first screen that we did, I imported an SVG file that had actually outlines and was like a, a graphic. But as soon as I import it into Blender, it will not render. Like, you get the, the file from an SVG or from a design inside the software, and you will not have this. So I completely missed that there's also 2D outlines for splines that are not happening inside of Blender right now, which is OK. There's 500 workarounds. There's things to do with it. Uh, but also, again, here, the caps are usually not meshed and evaluated. So this has been done by Dalai and uh, imported into the file uh, by hand. So how did I miss this? Like, I've been working on this for two years. And just uh, one day before my talk, Dalai came around and told me about this. So anyway, where did we stop? It's actually the quest to spherical caps. So for two years, I've been doing small videos. I've been tweeting. I've been on other platforms. Um, and so I want to try to tell you how it is nice and good to interact with developers, what maybe I haven't done always correct. So please don't do this. It's you can write as many question marks and exclamation marks as you want, but they're not getting a feature into Blender. Also, just saying, hey, Software X does it differently or better is not helping anyone. But also, don't do this. Like, Even if you're nice and you get a lot of retweets, you cannot expect the Blender developers or generally Blender to scan uh, everything that's going on on social media, on Twitter, or wherever. Like, You need to somehow find uh, a way to interact with developers uh, in a way that they can read stuff, they can uh, interact with stuff, and also give you feedback. And also, it's not really working. The screenshot where Ton answered me that the feature should be there soon is also one year old. So Twitter is nice, but it's not getting you a feature inside of Blender. So I talked about uh, a place where you can get feedback, where you can interact with developers, and some might think, it's developer.blender.org, but that's not correct. 
So the thing that I would show to the developer would just get the answer, this works as intended because the file is not breaking. The file is imported valid, the spline is imported correctly from the SVG file, and there's no error message, there's no crash, but there's help. So go to blenderdeveloper.org and submit a, a bug if it's a bug, but if you have a feature, there's right-click select. So the blender.org, a developer.blender.org is a bug tracker, right click select is for features. So right click select is part of the Blender community and um, is like a separate part, but a really, really nice part of it. The Blender community consists of Blender News, right click select, graphic all where the builds also for animation nodes uh, are stored, then there's a Spanish-speaking community, and also it stores or is the place for communications uh, with the Blender chat. Regarding Blender chat, it also does not help to bug people on the Blender chat and ask for the feature, even though Ton will give you lots of love and other people uh, will give you lots of love. So you have a bug inside Blender, so it crashes, you get an error message, something explodes, Get an example file ready and head over to developer.blender.org and make sure you fill out the necessary details. There's like an um, explanation how to do that in video form by uh, Pablo, but there's also written manuals how to do this correctly. If you have a feature request, then you can go to right-click select and basically have a big playground to describe your feature. You can describe it at example images, you can example link to videos, uh, and you even paste like UI mockups and not only um, do these things, but you can also vote on them, discuss with others, and get the stone rolling. And the good thing is it's um, monitored by some of the Blender developers, and it's a spot where you can actually get traction for something and have like a, um, yeah, a useful interaction and not something that goes down into a Twitter stream and is lost forever. Just for you as an example how this works, on the right hand side is one of the uh, initial posts I wrote. For the feature you can get embed GIFs, I also made like a cringy video that I put in there and also it says, it's really cut off, close, status in development, which it is and which it maybe isn't. But the important part is writing this blog, <laughs> writing this blog post, basically, I thought I had everything down. This was two years ago, and I thought, like, this is all the information I need to know about this feature. But then just one day ago, Dalai wrote me, like, mm, maybe there's, like, a 2D problem. And also, while in preparation of the talk, there were so many questions still open. And so I understood more and more why there, this feature is not, like, a one click. I will put this line of code inside Blender, and we have a new feature. Because what's with this? So right now, all the solutions I found are adding the curve ends. So you import a spline from your design, and depending on how your initial software behaves, your spline will be uh, extended. So maybe we need to inset the um, round caps to the curve for some users. Then there's the thing I was talking yesterday with somebody. There's continuity errors. So in Blender, the curve cannot be one thickness, but it can vary in thickness. So you can have a really tiny end and a really thick middle part. So there could be continuation errors between the line and the round cap. And there's also, I always expected the super clean loops, and there's just like a UV sphere as an end. But you cannot be really sure if this is what the user wants. So maybe some people want like a more tapered end with uh, loops that go around and interact with each other. So, the result of this presentation, and I'm really happy to tell you, I stand in, you, in front of you with empty hands, and that's completely fine. Um, there's been so many good things happening in Blender development, and also in uh, yeah, general uh, Blender projects, be it from the institute or uh, from other people around. We now have geometry nodes, so they have been overhauled a few times, but now it's a really solid system. This really solid system allows for creatives and other people to uh, build tools inside of Blender and help other people. We have uh, general uh, progress on the curve UI and also on the uh, behavior of the curve. So there has been like the profile settings and like it's getting much better now uh, to render these curves. In the meantime, cool. PowerPoint just crashed. Keep. I'm just trying to go back now. 
Yeah, it works, okay. And we have a, a full new modifier and even other modifiers, and it's super important to have stuff like this because this modifier only allowed for crazy workarounds like this. And I cannot make this um, line of new things in Blender complete, so there's just a slide of stuff that's happening. UI stuff, performance, cycles, the flamenco render management, there's bug fixes, there's focus on animation and rigging. So thank you, Blender devs. Maybe let's talk and figure out how to make this happen and how to make um, this part of Blender more approachable. And in general, that's all. Thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoyed the talk. <laughs> <laughs>